Hi, welcome to a new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to fit some enzyme kinetic data to a michaelis menten equation. So the data would be reaction velocity that's been measured as a function of substrate concentration. Um, we want to estimate the Vmax and the Km for the enzyme. Now I'm going to do this using Python. and This is what you see in front of you on the screen. This is actually a program called Spider, Spider 3, that can be used to, uh, to help, that can be used to help you write Python and run Python. I quite like it. Um, it's got this fairly common tool to use, actually. It's available on most distributions, Python distributions. So on the right hand side, we have the Python console. Okay. Alright, so 4 plus 5 is 9. On the left hand side, I have an editor, and I can we can put in scripts here. Actually, let's do something a bit more adventurous. Uh, let's do a for loop. Okay, and then print i. And so I can save that here. That's the save button. It's already got a file name called fit. And if I run this, to run it, you just use the green button up here. If I run it, I get uh, the loop executing. Okay, so this is a convenient platform to write your Python and run your Python. Okay, so let's start first then by, I'm going to import some packages I need. Um, so the first is SciPy. So this is where the fitting algorithms will be found. This is a scientific library for Python, very commonly used. The second one is NumPy. Uh, this is a, another very common library that's used in scientific computing. It's, it's used for handling arrays. Uh, I'm going to call NumPy NP because it's saying NumPy all the time is too much. And the second one, the third one I'm going to do is to add some plotting support. Now plotting in Python is normally done with matplotlib and I, I can never remember the import statement for that. It's quite long. Um, so what I do instead, I import pylab which pulls in matplotlib for me as well as a couple other things. But, uh, I don't care about the other things. Uh, and I'll call it PLT for plot. Okay. Now, um, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to create some fake enzyme kinetic data, and I'm going to try to fit a model to that fake enzyme kinetic data. And the enzyme kinet, the fake data is going to come from an actual enzyme I'm going to make up, which has a Km of 20. And it has sort of a Vmax of 20 and a Km of 15. Okay, so there's this enzyme somewhere that has this, has these parameters, like VM, Vmax of 20 and a Km of 15. And I'm going to try to generate some fake experimental data from this enzyme. And then I'm going to fit that data to the Kills Minton equation to see if I can recover these two values, 20 and 15. Okay, first thing I'll do is is create an array that's going to hold the substrate concentrations. We we'll just call that X. So the, these will be the substrate concentrations. Okay, there's seven in all, and I'll record the length of that array in in data points. Just the length. The first value is zero, and that means a substrate concentration of zero, and that means that the reaction velocity will be zero at the first point. And then the substrate concentrations increase. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is define the model, which is the michaelis menten equation model, and this is going to be a function called model. It's going to have three arguments. The first argument is the vector or the array of substrate concentrations. And then two the remaining two arguments, the Vmax and the Km. And from this function, I will return the value for the uh, Metten equation. So it's Km, oops, uh, x plus Km plus. Okay. So this just computes the michaelis menten equation for me. And so let's actually, let's actually compute the michaelis menten curve for our perfect enzyme here with a uh, Vmax of 20 and a Km of 50. So all I have to do is call model with the x vector and with the actual 
uh, kinetic parameters I want to use for this particular enzyme. So let me let me run this. Okay, so that ran fine. Let's plot that. So I just use plot, plt, and then the plot function. That takes x and y. And there you can see that's my perfect data. Now I want to turn that perfect data into fake experimental data. And one way to do that is to add some noise to every data point. Now there's a convenient function in NumPy called random normal. And what that does is it'll draw a random number from a normal distribution. So I'm going to assume that the errors or the noise around each data point is normally distributed. And the error is going to be plus or minus around each data point. So let's make the random number have a mean of zero. Let's give it a standard deviation of one. And let's just return one data point. So these three arguments are the mean for the normal distribution, the standard deviation for the normal distribution, and how many random numbers I want to draw from that normal distribution, which this is one. So if I run that, I get this number, a single number, minus 0.77. Now uh, it's minus, of course, because the mean is centered on zero, so it's possible for random numbers to be drawn to the left of the mean, which is in the negative quadrant, or to the right of the mean, which is in the positive quadrant. I can run this again, of course. I'll get, I'll get a different random number each time I do it. I can also ask it to compute 10 numbers all in one go for me. Okay, and these are my normally distributed random numbers. And I basically want to add those onto my perfect data. So let's just do that. So let's define a variable called st for the standard deviation, an array called ur, which is going to be, oops, which is going to be my uh, random number, random normal, mean of zero, standard deviation of st, and I will return n data points of them. And so let's run that just to show you what it looks like. So ur. Okay, those are my random numbers, and I'm going to add those onto y. Okay, that'll give me y data now that's uh, got some errors in it. Uh, one odd thing you'll notice is that the first value is a negative value, and I know though that this corresponds to the zero substrate concentration. I know that at zero substrate concentration, the reaction velocity will be zero, so I might as well set that to zero. So I'll set the first one to zero. Okay, so that looks, that looks a bit better now. Okay, and let's plot that to see what that looks like. Okay, so now it's actually got some um, errors in it. Okay, although it doesn't look like it, but it does. And if I run that again, maybe we'll see a slightly different profile. Okay, yeah, that definitely has definitely got errors in it. Um, okay, so. I'm pretty much almost ready now, uh, so I need to now, this is my experimental data, and I need to fit the model to this experimental data. Okay, so let me get hold of a couple of things. First thing I need is the curve fitting algorithm requires an initial guess for the Vmax and Km. I'll set them to 1 and 1. You could set them to any other any number you want. The second thing is I actually make the call to the curve fitting one. I'm just going to paste it in here and then I'll walk you through it. Um, so this is it. It's quite a long one. And let's change that to initial guess. There we go. Okay. So this has a number of arguments. So the function call itself is scipy optimize curve fit. Okay, that's what you want to call. It takes a whole bunch of parameters. The first one is the model we want to fit to. So the model, of course, is our michaelis menten model. Then once the two, the two data sets, x and y, so that's the substrate concentration and the reaction velocity. Let me jump over this one for now. It wants the initial guess okay, that I have. That initial guess is 1, 1. And then it wants the, what are the errors in my data? Because these will be used to weight the fit. So if some point, seven points have, have more errors than others, then I want to put less weight on those points. Okay. Now what are the, what is error in my case? Well the errors in my case they're pretty much all the same. They have a standard deviation of one. Every point had a standard deviation of one. And so what I need to do is to create an array create an array error 
which has, I'll use this uh, method called full, which allows me to fill up an array of a given size, sizes and data points, with a value of standard deviation. Okay. Just, let me sh just to show you what this looks like if I run it, let me show you over here. So let me paste that in. So if I run this and look at error, it gives me an array of ones, basically. Now the first number, the first element one, actually is at the substitute concentration of zero. And I know that that has no error at all. I know that at zero concentration, I'll get a zero reaction rate. Now, I can't actually set this to zero, though, because these weightings are used in the denominator of the fitting equation. And if any one of them is zero, I'll get a divide by zero. So what I need to do is just to make the first number very small. So let me do that over here. So I'll make that very small. Okay, so now if I run it, Oops, something didn't quite go wrong. Uh, what mistake did I make? Ah, yes. So here's an interesting uh, mistake. So I just ran this, and you notice it said optimal parameters not found. So it wasn't able to fit. Now the reason for this is that the errors are integers rather than floats. It's a peculiar error, but I need to change the standard deviation to a floating point number. Okay, if I do that, it comes back as if everything was okay, all right? So this is one thing you have to be careful with. Um, when you, the errors in ER must be floating point, okay? They can't be integers. So when you use standard deviation here, when I fill this error array up, it must be filled with floating point numbers, okay? So we've got here is 10 to the minus 6, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. Now the fit occurred. Um, one thing I haven't told you is what some, I, well, I haven't told you what this thing means. So we did all the arguments except this one. This one, I'll just remind you again, this is the, these are the standard deviations on each of your error points. In our case, the standard deviation was 1, except for the first one, which is pretty perfect. So I just set that to a very small number, meaning the error is very small. The other thing I'm, I didn't tell you about was this here, absolute signal. Now your errors can either be relative or absolute. Now if they're absolute, it basically means you your reaction velocities have a plus or minus uh, an actual reaction velocity value units, right? So if I had a reaction velocity of five and I had five plus or minus one, that means that one is in the unit of whatever the reaction velocity is. And in that case, I would set the absolute sigma to true. If your errors, however, are relative, then you want to set that to false. A lot of the time, I guess, uh, at least in, in enzyme kinetics, you will be measuring actual reaction velocities, and so you'll need to set the absolute sigma to true. Okay. The final thing is, what does this function return? It returns a couple of things. It'll return the fitted parameters and something called the covariance matrix. We'll come back to the covariance matrix in a minute. Uh, I ran this, so, and it came back without any, without any complaints. So if I look at parameters, those are my fitted parameters. 19.69 and 15.06. So that's the Vmax at 19.69, and the Km is 15.06. Recall that the actual values for this fictitious enzyme was 20 for the Vmax, so that's pretty close, at 19.69, and the actual came was 15, and that's very close to the 15.06. Okay, so let's just um, print out the parameters here, okay, so I can run it again. All right. Now, each time I run it, you notice I get slightly different values. That's because I'm generating new random data each time. Right. Now, there's a way, to, there's a way, so you can notice that sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. This one is particularly bad. We've got 18.95 and 30.39. Let's have a look at the data to see what it actually looks like, because maybe, maybe that will tell us that it's pretty bad. Yeah, that could be pretty bad. That could be pretty bad data, and that's probably why it's uh, the fitted estimates are not very good. Now, what else can we do here? Well, like we could do some plotting. So, um, for one thing, uh, let's plot the error bars. So I'm using a thing called error bar, 
this will, this doesn't plot the points, it just plots the error bars around the points. So it's, it takes x and y as the coordinates. The array of errors, all right, uh, the errors are going to be plotted as in blue, and the actual point, the central point is going to be marked with a square, and the cap size, you know, the little t's up that are on the error bars will be of size 5. If I run this, you'll see that's our that's our experimental data. Okay, so you can see that the error bars are all the same, of course, because they're all set to 1. The error bar at 0, though, is of course 0, because I'm assuming we've got a perfect point there. Now, the other thing I can do is try to plot the fitted, the fitted line on top of this. And that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm just going to paste over this code here. So this code, it generates um, an x coordinate from 0 to 400. The 400 corresponds to the maximum value of the substrate concentration. And then I'm going to plot t versus the model computed at t with parameters given by parameters. Okay, And then just to show you that I can save this as a PDF if I need it later for for a paper or whatever, then I'm going to show it. So let's run this to see what it looks like. Okay, there you go. So the orange, all right, is the fitted line. Okay. And if I run it again, it'll be slightly different, slightly different, and so on. So this is now my fitted line and my fitted parameters. Uh, let's uh, put in a summary. Type, print out some summaries here. So let me get rid of that parameter, that, that print out there, and put in these. Oops. So what this is going to do is going to print out the the Vmax and compare it to the actual Vmax, uh, the Km compared to the actual Km. So let me run that. Okay. So there it is. The Vmax is 20.36, but it should be 20. The Km is 15.88, but it should be 15. Now, what about these things? Now, this is where the covariance matrix comes in. In fact, the covariance matrix is important for giving you an estimate of, of for how certain we are in those values that were fitted. Now, these uncertainties come from the fact that there are errors in your data, and these errors have been propagated into the fitted Vmax and Km. Uh, so the variances can be found from the main diagonal of the covariance matrix, and perhaps uh, also of interest is the standard deviation, right? So the standard deviation is the square root of the values on the uh, main diagonal. So covariance zero zero is the variance for the Vmax, and the co and element one one is the variance for the Km. So what I've got here then is so the variance for the Vmax is 0.63 and the variance for the Km is 10.1. So these are actually pretty pretty big actually. So there's quite a bit of uncertainty here. I mean I guess it looks better if you do the standard deviation but it's still bad 3. And the Vmax is much smaller 0.79. If I were to rerun this, okay, I'll get different numbers because you know I've, I've got different errors in my experimental data. Let's push this over here because it doesn't look good. okay. That's a bit better. So if you look at the standard deviations, instead this is the standard deviation for the Vmax, and this is the standard deviation for the Km. All right, if I rerun this, I've got slightly different numbers because I've got different experimental data. Now in practice, you'll put your own experimental data in here. You'd have your own estimates for the errors in your experimental data, which won't necessarily be one for every point, but will be different for every point. And you can run this, and you'll get estimates for the Vmax and Km. Okay, so that finishes that. Um, what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to show you what happens if you were to do the same thing but with uh, a line with a Burke plot. And what you'll find is that the errors, confidence, or the error, error estimates on the parameters, especially on the KM, will be much bigger with a line with a Burke plot. Okay, until next time then, bye now.